there guys ken here you're at the rifty apprentice and welcome to the crafty corner um today we are tackling part two of jane the jane davenport journal that we were constructing out of the two envelopes i'm going to keep this video real time I'm going to try to keep it about mm, somewhere around the 30 minute mark and if we have to make a part three we'll make a part three excuse me i'm gonna adjust the camera really quickly um, so I did some digging and some searching, um, while the camera was off before I decided to shoot this video and lo and behold, I found the matching pattern paper for what we made the cover out of. It was on another journal that I had created a while ago, an experimental journal, um, that did not stand up to the test of time. So I actually want to take this image to construct the back cover but we're going to do a little differently don't you worry it'll be a little different so i'm just going to cut that out i pulled some additional pattern paper here are the little off cuts from where we made the front of the journal here i did say those um i pulled some matching pattern papers out of um the jane davenport pattern pack that we let this paper come from that way we can be sure that um all of our papers are going to match so i have these two matching papers to go to the inside and this is the paper that i selected to um do the back so let's just go ahead and jump in and get started so i want to do the inside first so there are a million ways you can do this no way is wrong um if you want to follow along with the way i do it fine hopefully what will happen is what you see me do will spark ideas and you'll be able to run off in your own direction doing this. So let's go ahead. Now that pattern paper is perforated. Let's see, we're gonna try to move at a pretty moderate rate, um, but that's the back, so I don't need that. These are the two I'm gonna be using to cover the front and I tore out two because the size of this paper one sheet i don't think would be big enough to cover both sides so i'm just tearing that off and we are going to now this paper has a lot of different designs in it i love jane davenport everything so my idea is i'm going to completely cover this side closing up the pocket here but i'm not going to put glue here i want to leave that open i'm only going to put glue here um, and along the very bottom, that way I can cut this edge and make that a pocket that slides in and out. And we'll eventually um, probably create a book board that'll slide in and out of there. Um, the paper on the front and the back will give that some stability. Um, on this side, I'm going to lay paper down and raise the pocket just a little bit giving me just a little bit more surface room over here to work with um, for decorating the inside. So let's make that happen in this video. Hopefully, see, I wanna use the side that looked like it has been gessoed and we'll start here. I'm just going to, let's see, I wanna raise that pocket about that much and i'm not measuring anything i'm just kind of eyeballing here uh you guys can measure if you want to i think once i put um my little hole there for the pocket that should it'll still be wide i could cut that little part off hmm I would have to be really careful with my exacto knife. We'll see about that. Maybe I can slide something under there to prevent from cutting down. You know what? I'm gonna give that a try. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about if you didn't follow what I was saying just then. Okay, so first things first, let's get this cut. I wanna take it all the way to the end of the journal. So I'm gonna grab a pencil and we're just going to mark this paper off right here on the end. Hopefully, I'll be able to see that. And instead of marking the other one, I'll go ahead and cut it. Now, normally, 
and probably for future videos i'll have all this kind of stuff done in advance pre-cutting but since we started out making this one for uh from scratch see i knew that was going to happen i was going to lose that mark Mm-hmm. i sure did just as sure as i'm sitting here let's see where could it have possibly been I think that's it. Oh, there we go. I see it now. Got my eye on it. I'm going to put this in a cutter. Now, I hope this cuts straight. I'll be honest. I've been using this cutter lately, guys, and I don't know what the deal with it is, but it everything seems square. But for some reason, it's crooked. It's, I don't know what the problem is. All right, I'm gonna cut slow. Hopefully, it'll be a straight cut. I don't know. I don't think it was. It seems like it's a little off to me, but we're gonna go with it. Set that to the side. Let's see here. Okay, that'll work. Now, let's see. I want more of this design, so we'll push it up this way to measure the top. And you know what? Let's show a little bit of the envelope. There we go. Just a little teeny winchy little teeny winchy <laughs> all right so let's cut that i'm gonna use my small cutter to cut that so i can be sure i get a more precise cut and of course you can do this with an exacto knife or scissors you do not have to have all these colors I just so happen to have them. Um, you know what? Let me do that from this direction because I'm right-handed. That way I can hold on to this paper as I cut. Okay, there we go. This little cutter does have some issues sometimes though. Yeah, nothing's perfect. All right, throwing a little off cuts to the side. And I think I want to ink. Some of this stuff I'll probably speed through. I'm going to ink the sides here really quickly. Yes, I ink directly from the inking pad. And I'm using black. I understand it's going to be um, kind of a bold contrast. Let's punch little hole thumb. I'm just going to eyeball the middle. Alright. And then I'll ink the top edge of it as well. You can ink in that little circle. It's not too deep in. Well, that's why I go to like halfway of those little screws that I can see. Because I know that that's pretty deep without being too deep for my ink pad to still be able to. Because I don't use like little ink daubers or anything like that. But so, that's that. We can sit it to the side so that ink can dry for a minute before we put it on. Let's move on. Where are we? We're at 7 minutes and 40 seconds. All right. Let's put on the other side. We're going to close this one up completely. Let's see here. Taking it all the way down to the crease, just about a 16th of an inch away. And then I'm gonna measure that off. Oh, maybe, let me measure it this way first. Let's cut it the long way. Let's cut it this way and I wanna take it Again, I'm going to give myself about a sixteenth of an inch on this side as well. All right. I wish I could use my small cutter to cut this just so I could be sure it was straight. But we are going to keep rocking. When you ink it, 
it helps um, with the white edging as well as any edges that may hide the appearance with any edges that may not be straight. Let's see it like that. I'm a little off cut, so I'm keeping over to the side. We're gonna be using all of those. Okay, let's see here. Now we need to measure this for Just the 16th. We're still doing a 16th. I mean, I have to actually cut the end of that off anyway. So, all right. And then we will grab the small cutter again. We are crafting as fast as we can. Yes, we are. We're going to try to get as much done as we can. Turn it around the other way. I'm doing all that in frame. And we are gonna just cut that. Those will make some really nice belly bands. Gonna make a really cute belly band with some stuff layered on top of it. Okay, so what are we doing? We are, and we are actually gonna leave that completely just like that. We're just using that for backing. We're gonna ink around, and then we'll move on to cutting the back. Oh, drop an ink pads, don't drop it on there. Once we actually get the back cut, then we will adhere everything down. And I think that'll be it for the cover. We're gonna do a little work on the back. The back is gonna take a little work. It won't be as simple as the insides are. All right. Let's sit that to the side, let it dry, and we'll move on to cutting the back here. So, let's see. Love, 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 love the way that goes together. Okay, so I don't know what side of that paper I want to use. So, what I do know is that this is gonna fit on top of, okay, so let's do this. Let's cut this out. And I don't care about saving this paper, although parts of it could probably be used for smaller journals. So let's do this. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let's just put this out of here because we're going to be using this. So I'm just going to cut this out really quickly. Uh, and it'll give me a chance to save some of this paper because you know all crafters are hoarders and I have a million things rushing through my head that I can do with this paper. This end here that I'm going to be saving. Yes. Throwing that to the side. All right. Let's see. Let's go ahead and push this off. No, I don't want to take the chance of tearing it. So we will just cut this off. And this end off. Now I'm trying to see. That's trash and that's trash. All right. 12 minutes. I am checking the time. I'm checking the time. All right. So we need to go ahead and cut this. We're going to again just cut a full panel. I decided to use this side as you can see. We'll do it this way. I think this is the way I want to do it. Okay. Um, where's my pencil? Now, I need to measure it just to about a sixteenth of an inch from that line. I'm trying to see. I think that's my line right there. So, I want to go to about right there. 
All right, let's cut that real quick. Ink it, then we can get to adhering stuff. Uh, in the meantime, I'm really thinking about what I want to do with the other image. Do I want to eliminate this? Um, I got that square up. It's lined up on the cutting line. I don't know, guys. I'm going to go slow. Hopefully, going slow helps with the straightness. Because I have been having an issue with that. Okay, let's cut this down to length. And let's see here. All right. And a small cutter. Okay, the way we're working, we may get the entire cover done this video. And then part three, we can concentrate on putting together the signature for it. That is the plan. That is the plan. Okay. All right. We are crafting pretty fast, though. So, okay, so let's ink that. It's pretty straightforward when you're using pattern paper. I mean, we're not doing, I'm just kind of showing you guys how to make like your basic journal. It's going to have a few little, you know, tucks and turns and surprises on it, but it's not going to be too elaborate. I just want to give you guys the basics and then you can kind of run with it. We'll have other videos where we do really elaborate journals. And this particular one will be an ongoing series where we do this journal to completion of the point to the point where I either give it away or put it up for sale, one or the other. So I'll throw that to the side for right now and we will start gluing. Okay, I needed to grab some glue paper, glue your paper. Um, let's see here. We are doing which one are we doing? The front here. This was the first one. So let's see. We want to put our glue on that panel then. So I'm going to be using Fabri Tac. You can, I could use a Lings, but I don't want to use a wet glue um, because I really don't want to have to wait on it to dry. So I'm going to use this Fabri Tac because this is my trusted. What am I doing? I'm completely closing this up. I did not mean to do any of that that way. I have ran off my rockers, guys. One second, this is gonna be something I have to fix. So, cause I don't wanna have to recut this paper. So give me one right. second. Wonderful thing you usually get to see how I fix a mistake really quickly. I grabbed a damp towel. I'm gonna wipe that glue off right there. Yes, that's gonna dampen my paper just a little bit. But I'm going to continue to work with it anyway. Now, here's the thing. I just made this pocket a lot smaller than I intended, but that's okay. We're going to roll with it. I'm going to rub my glue down, making sure not to go up into the pocket because I don't want to make it any smaller. So I'm rubbing outwards. That's okay. No mistakes. Quick fixes we can do. Quick fixes we can do. I have to put some more glue there. All right. I don't know what I was thinking, but that's okay. Still going to be plenty big enough for a tag. Let's get that put down really quick before that dries. There we go. There we go. Hopefully that was in frame. May not have been. If not, I'm sorry, guys. My apologies. Just trying to get that positioned. That's how I want it. All right. That should do it. Trying to push it down just a little more. All right. Now, I need to make sure that that didn't close up. Okay. 
up. But we do want that to close up. Let's use our bone folder. We're just gonna go around the edges and really press that down. I'm not sure. Let's see. Yeah, I need to. I'm gonna re-glue that in. It did not, it didn't glue well. Let's see. Oh, let's see how I'm gonna do this. Oh, we are fixing. We are fixing on a fly here. You guys are getting to see me really at work. Just okay though. I know good old fabric tech gonna take care of it. Get that adhered on down. And we're not gonna have that to worry about it all. Continue going around this. Make sure that everything is pressed down. I can hear if it wants to come up. And if so, I'll just slide right on in there. Okay, let's dial. Just wanted to make sure. Okay. Okay, that's pretty cool. I really want to cut that off, but we may do that in the next video. Let's go ahead and get this piece put down. Now this one I can do the way I was about to do the other one. I got that in frame. Moving real quick here. I'm trying to time myself on these videos. <laughs> Not let them be so long. All right. And then I'm gonna smear. Yes, I'm gonna smear that all over that. I want it to be all over, all over. It's not going to bleed through anything. I'm not worried about that. It's not going to work the paper. I just want it smooth. Pick that up. And we are going to go ahead and put that on. Let's see here. Right about there. The thing about this glue is if it dries, you don't really have anything to worry about. You can just roll it off. See if I can reposition it. Once it dries, it comes right off. Doesn't leave any type of residue or anything. Let's go ahead and just bone fold that down. Make sure it's good. You may use a card or something when you do this. I normally do. I don't know what mine is. There it is. But this gives me a little bit more pressure anyway. All right, so now I just closed it down a lot more than I should have. Oh well, once again, I don't know why I keep making these simple mistakes, but you know what? I'm not gonna edit them out, I'm not. We're gonna, I'm gonna see how that pocket is just gonna be a lot shorter now. I was able to save this one, but I can't save that one. <laughs> God, I don't know. I was only supposed to put glue around the top part, not the bottom part. They closed the pocket up and made it shorter. So don't you make that mistake if you decide to do it this way. But we're going to keep rolling with the punches. You know what? We are not going to stop. It is still going to be an awesome journal. You watch what I tell you. Now, here is where I need to. We rolling up on the end of 30 minutes here. Uh, okay, so it's probably going to be a little bit longer than 30, sorry. Because um, I do want to get this back on. I don't want to get it all finished. But I did try. I did try. So I think I want to turn this into a pocket. But maybe I want the whole thing to be a pocket. And not just the piece. Hmm. 
So I think I want the whole piece to be a pocket, the whole back panel. Since I made this pocket shorter than I intended to, let's make this pocket the bigger pocket. Okay. And then this we'll use as the facing on here and try to make it as even as we can with that face. Okay, let's do this. Let's bring this down about even, okay. It's about right there, which means her face would have been at the top here, somewhere in there. So, let's see if we can clip this off in the same spot. I think that's about perfect, just how it is. Okay. And actually, that's not straight. That's straight. Actually, about right there. Okay. And then this needs to be cut about right there. All right. We're going to keep writing this straight. Let's see here. We got to line this back up. I'm going to put this in an examination pouch, definitely now. Okay, mainly because we want to give the back just as much stability as we gave the front. Okay, so this needs to go. This about right if her head is at the top. I put it in the center, it's off a little bit. I'm not gonna really worry about it. Um, it still looks fine. Let's see. I'll use Aileen's because when you run it through the, the elimination machine, it will dry the glue. So we will use a wet glue for this one. We are just tacking down in the middle directly. I did not ink around it. The inking is on the edge, this way. Okay. A little bit up there, a little bit down here. That looks about right to me. Gonna press that down get it off of that hump. All right. So, really quickly, I'm going to eliminate this, and then we are going to cut the pouch open so that we can glue this down, pull the elimination out the back. Oh, I'll just show you guys. I'll be right back. I'm going to go ahead and, or I'm gonna go ahead and cut that little sixteenth of an inch that I left there. I'm gonna actually go ahead and just follow my outline and cut it off. And what this is gonna do is open a pocket on this side of the journal. There we go. Now, here you will see we have a pocket wait. Oh, it glued to the back side of that envelope. That was lucky for me. So, when we inserted the envelopes together, when I accidentally put the glue here, it glued to the back of the other envelope that was inserted inside. So, I still have that full deep pocket. So I actually do not have to make this a pocket. That was a lucky break. All thanks to the way I put the envelope, conjoined the envelopes in the beginning. So there, we removed it. And as you can see, what we'll end up having here is place here for ephemera, um, you know, inspirational photos, reference photos, notes you need to take. We will have uh, 
a pocket here inside the journal cover itself. Well, I don't know why I can't get nothing in there. There we go. That pocket will be for the book board or whatever. Same thing, same difference. Just need to ink that edge there. And then I'm still thinking about making this a pocket here. I'm still debating on that. Why not have a tag there as well? Why not? It'll give more journaling space, more space to create with art journaling and mixed media. We'll put maybe like a mixed media panel um, tag insert for mixed media creation. Okay, so um, where are we? We need to eliminate the back cover. Let's go ahead and get done with the cover. And we'll get everything inked and we will be able to call it done for this video. I am just going to slide this in here. Now, the technique that I'm going to use for this um, may be a little different than what you guys expect. So, let's get this done real quick and then we're going to call this video a wrap. And then we'll start working on our signature because this video, is, I mean, this journal is only big enough for one signature. We'll start working on our signature in the next video. Now we'll start working on our, so yeah. And whatever we're gonna put on the inside, however we're gonna decorate the inside of the journal. Like that'll be the next video. Oh, this may turn out to be four part series before I'm done. Just trying to show you guys how to create this one. Oh. That's what happens when you want to do it right. So I'm just cutting off the extra of that pouch so I can save that for something else. Now I'm going to go ahead and run this through the machine and we'll be right back. Okay, that is ready. Let's get it cut down. Now, I cut this down to about a sixteenth of an inch on each side when I do these, because I always want them to fit on whatever I'm doing it for. Oh, I just moved that. Hold on, let's try that again. Bring my fingers out a little bit more. Okay. I said, well, that didn't cut at all, did it? All right. And um, so I, be, I was contemplating exactly how to do this while um, I was running it through the machine. So I think, okay, so originally I was gonna remove the back of the pouch, right? But I think I should leave the back of the pouch on for more stability to the journal. I just need to uh, make sure that when I glue, I glue inside the perimeter of the pattern paper, which would have been the original size of the pocket if I hadn't eliminated it anyway. So, great, wonderful. Now we need to um, give this a little punchy here. Let's see. And we're going to just kind of add a middle right above her head. Right. Right there like that. If I can get through it. Ah, barely. Oh, got stuck. Catastrophe avoided. And I still got a clean cut. And my machine is okay. We're doing great. So I really kind of want to ink that, but it takes so long for the ink to dry on those pouches. So we're not going to, let's just go ahead and grab our journal and get this down. We are almost done. Let's see here, is that gonna extend? That is going to extend way too much beyond the journal for me. So here is what I'm going to do. Keep your eyes on guys, cause I'm putting this all the way down to the pattern paper. Is that gonna open the pouch? Absolutely not. But what I do whenever I do this is I'll run it through the machine again just to make sure 
that that plastic is heat adhered. So I'm gonna just cut that off because I want it to fit exactly on the journal. See? And this is what happens when I don't make a prototype before I make a video. As you guys know, I'm just kind of making this journal on the fly with you all. Uh, that might would be okay, but I'm gonna run it through one more time just to be on the safe side. I don't know if it'll be too long top and bottom. I might have to cut the top and bottom off too, but I'm still gonna actually have the plastic from the elimination pouch that's gonna be there to help protect everything. So that's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, yeah, so um, as soon as that's ran through, we'll real quick wrapping up here. So we have that pocket. We'll put something decoration here. We'll decorate here on this side because we have that full panel. Um, on the back, it's gonna be a pocket and we will decorate that pocket before this video ends. Let's see here. Um, it is, I need to cut off a little bit of that too. Um, let's see, I don't want to cut off too much. So I'm just going to cut up to that point. Yeah, that's going to pull my pouch open, but I can try resealing it one more time. Okay. Just needed to cut that off so it wouldn't be as be taller than the journal. I'm gonna run it through one more time. Okay, I got a lot of little pieces to clean up on my desk. I could probably do a 15 minute craft create from right here with all these little pieces that I just have from doing this journal so far. But of course, I'm gonna save my off cuts for decorating the inside. Oh Lord, how long is this video? There's no telling at this point. Um, we're wrapping up, we're wrapping up. Maybe I shouldn't be so worried about the time because if you guys didn't want to watch, you wouldn't, right? You, you click off. Okay, I think that's going to be fine. Just like that, let's see. Yes, that is fine. We're going to let that be fine, okay. So, I'm going to use Fabrifix. And I just have it in a little squeeze bottle here for whenever I need to do really thin line. And it will glue these pouches just fine with no problem at all. So I'm gonna keep that in a thin string as close to the edge as I can. Cause again, if you remember, this is a pocket as close to the edge as I can, but I'm only staying on the, pattern paper. I'm not going on the actual plastic. I'm not really worried about glue showing through. I've done that before and didn't have a problem with it, but just for the sake of, you know, video and airing with caution, we'll just put the glue on the pattern paper side. Okay. Oh. I need that to get stuck. And I don't need anything breaking my glue line, which is what I'm allowing to happen right now. If I don't hurry up, this glue is going to dry because you get just a few working moments. It doesn't stay maneuverable nearly as long as a water-based glue does. And just making sure I got enough glue. All right. I tell you, I keep getting stuff in there. All right, I am actually gonna just stand it up and place that on, just like that. Open on and then press it down. Just kind of maneuver it into place, making sure it's not blocking the side of, there we go. I think that is pretty good. Let's get that pressed down, give it a little oil. 
All right. I really should have inked that pocket, but it's no big deal. You can tell it's a pocket, can't you? You sure can. All right. There we go. We're making progress. We're making good progress. I like it. I want to put something on here to decorate this. Don't know what it is. We're going to tackle that in the next video. So we have our front. We have our inside cover. Pocket there. Pocket here on the side. We have our back pocket here. In the back cover. As well. So. That's not bad. You know what I'm saying? We did quite a bit of work here. I've got to figure out why this pocket does not want to. Did it glue shit? Is it gone? Got glue shit, Lord. Okay. Let's open it back up. It got glue shit from right here in the back. Told you that Fabric Fix does a job. Okay. There's a pocket as well. And then last but not least, there's a pocket. So that's what we have created so far. We're going to have places to tuck little journaling cards in order to extend the range of the type of papers that we have in a journal. All right. So that's it for this video, guys. Be sure to join me back here next time for part three of making a impromptu art journal out of Jane Davenport pattern paper in two envelopes. If you like anything you saw, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Hopefully you guys did pick up on some things that you can use in your art journey. Go ahead and share the video. Remember that sharing is caring and maybe there's somebody else out there who would like or be able to use this information. Use the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. What do you think about this little series? What do you think about the things that we're doing? What do you think about the art journal that we're creating? Hopefully you're creating along with me using your supplies in order to create one at home. Trust me, those custom journals are so much more personal and you want to paint and draw and, and create in them so much more than you would just one you bought from the store. Um, don't forget to hit us up on all the social media sites, um, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. And you can also find us at the Thrifty Apprentice Sponsor Facebook group paints, pencils, pastels, and markers where we enjoy and welcome all things artsy and crafty. Okay. Um, that group is growing and I really, really enjoy um, the stuff that I see, here, see there and the people that are there. Um, what else? There is a link in the video description for my most recommended products. I do need to update that list, but there are um, with some newer items, but uh, so far, the things up until this point are on there, and I don't think I'm forgetting anything. So as I tell you at the end of every video, just keep painting and crafting. Mm -hmm.